This sermon is titled How to Receive Divine Healing Part 1 Be enriched as you listen All right are you ready to spend some time in God's word Amen So last two Sundays we were talking about mentoring coaching and nurturing people that's what we were doing the last two Sundays today we're going to do something different we're going to talk about how to receive divine healing so the, the whole service is geared towards uh towards just ministering towards receiving healing and our minister uh, receiving God working in us so we're going to um, speak along those lines next Sunday we'll continue the sermon series on mentoring coaching and nurturing people all right so today we're going to talk about how to receive divine healing now God wants us well in our bodies and minds he wants us well and in fact he's the way he's created us he's already placed healing mechanisms in our bodies so you know when we uh, you know, injure ourselves, get, some, get hurt here and there, our body automatically works on healing itself. So God has actually put that in our bodies. And then, of course, there are many natural ways by which healing can be administered to our bodies. And uh, whether it's by taking care of our health or through medicines and the help of doctors and all of that. I mean, thank God for these things. Thank God for the natural mechanisms that are already in place in the way our bodies are created. Thank God for uh, the natural help that we can get. But what we are interested in is how do we receive divine healing? Now, God is our healer. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. That's who he is. He is the healer, the supernatural, miracle-working healer who heals our bodies. And God has also established a covenant of healing. That means he says, look, in this relationship that you entered in through Jesus Christ, I have a covenant with you. I have a promise for you that I will be your healer. So God has a covenant of healing for us and he's also made a provision of healing for us through the cross of Jesus so when Jesus Christ died on the cross he bore our sicknesses and our diseases so that the Bible tells us by his wounds we have been healed so God has made provision for our healing but the question is how do we receive divine healing how do we receive that provision that's what we're interested in. Now, at the very beginning, I want to emphasize one very important truth. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. Let's read it out together, please. Verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. So the Apostle Paul, writing here in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 6, he says, look, there are different gifts, gifts of the Spirit, that's the context, but it's the same Holy Spirit who's working. There are different ministries or services but it's the same Lord who's being served and who is expressing himself through those ministries. And there are different operations or ways of working or demonstrations of power. Different. But it's the same God who's working in and all of those operations or the ways of expressing the power of God. The point is this, that, and, and we, if you want to put it in the context of he, divine healing, which we are interested in, it's important for us to understand that God administers his healing through many different ways. Now, we can't say this is the only way God would heal. No. There are many different ways through which 
divine healing is administered to us and through which you and I can actually receive divine healing. There are a variety of ways. The Holy Spirit ministers, expresses himself through a variety of gifts that he endows people with. The Lord Jesus Christ, his ministry is expressed through many ways. God's working, his power is expressed in a diversity of ways, in many different ways. And so in the context of healing, God will administer healing to us in so many different ways, in many different ways. And I tried to itemize this, and I'll just run through this list. Don't worry if you can't write all this down. They are already in the sermon notes on the website. Uh, at least 12 ways that you can see in Scripture how we can receive healing from God. At least 12 ways. I'll run through all of 12. Don't worry, we're not going to cover all 12 in today's sermon. <laughs> I will just touch on a few. But let's mention the 12. Number one, through His Word and personal faith. So we can receive healing, divine healing, through His Word and personal faith. Number two, through the quickening of His indwelling Spirit. Number three, through the power of His life in us. Number four, through receiving the prayer of faith in Jesus' name. So somebody can pray the prayer of faith over you in the name of Jesus. Number five, through the prayer of agreement in faith. So two of us can agree together and that can cause healing. Number six, through the healing anointing. So the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that causes healing. Number seven, through a word of command spoken over you in faith. So somebody can speak a word of command over you in faith and that God can use that to bring healing to you. Number eight, through partaking in the Lord's table in faith. So here's another way. That's why every Sunday when we partake of the Lord's table, we try to encourage us, you know, here's a moment when you can believe God, receive healing through that. Number nine, through the ministry of deliverance. So there are times when we ad uh, address spirits, spiritual sickness and infirmity, and through deliverance there's healing that takes place. Number 10, through the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, through gifts of healings, working in miracles, gift of faith, healing can be administered, we can receive healing. Verse number 11, through the manifestation of His healing presence. So sometimes as we worship God, there's just a presence of healing, a healing presence in the place, and, uh, and then healing takes place. Number 12, through the sovereign work of His glory. And so sometimes God just moves sovereignly, displaying and demonstrating His glory. So you can see that there are several ways, different ways by which we can receive healing, at least 12 of them. And there are probably more that we can list. Are you all with me so far? So today we just want to look at the first three very quickly. We're going to look at the first three. We want to encourage our hearts in faith. And then we're going to take a few moments in worship. Uh, just, just look to God during that time of worship. And then we want to expect healing. We want to see God work healing right here in our midst. If you've come here this morning, you know, expect maybe there's a problem in your, in your body or in your mind, in your emotions. And you say, God, I need healing. I need you to touch me. Today is your day. Expect God as we hear the word, as we worship, expect God to do something. Is that okay? All right, let's expect God to minister healing. Maybe some of us may be troubled by demonic powers, being tormented by spirits. Expect your deliverance today as we hear the word and then we get into a time of prayer and ministry. Expect healing, expect to be set free. Now let's talk about the first three things. Three ways, the first three ways that we can receive healing, divine healing from God. Number one, it's through his word and personal faith. And this is the simplest way, and this is a way all of us must learn how to receive healing. Because you can do this by yourself. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you. You don't need somebody to come and pray for you. It's just between you and God. Through His Word that you can receive healing by your faith. You see, the Bible makes it very clear to us that when God works, He works through His words. And his word is, God uses his word to minister healing to us. Psalm 107, verse 20, a very familiar verse. The Bible says, he sent, let's read it out together. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their 
troubles or distresses. So you can imagine people crying out to God, oh God, help me, oh God, come down, oh God, send an angel, oh God, do something. And God says, I'll send you my words. He sent his words and healed them and delivered them. So healing and deliverance comes to us through his words, through his words. And so we must learn how to receive that word so that we can experience healing and deliverance. So that's the first way. Through his word and our personal faith. In Proverbs 4, verses 20 to 22, again, a very familiar passage. God says, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they, my words, are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So God's word is healing to our whole body. So let's say this together. God's word is healing to my whole body. God says, you know, my word is health to your whole body. And we understand that, that the power of God is actually contained in his word. We know Hebrews 4 verse 12, for the word of God is alive and full of power. God's word is full of power. His healing power is in his words. And so we need to know how to connect to that word to receive his healing power, his delivering power. God's healing, God's deliverance, the power to heal, the power to deliver is in the word. And we need to know how to connect to it and receive his healing, his power, his deliverance for us. Are you all with me? And that's how, you know, we see even in the ministry of Jesus, when he ministered, he took time to preach and teach and heal. He just didn't go around randomly healing people. He went around preaching, teaching, and healing. So people came to him. They came to hear his word, and then they received healing. Even the apostles went out. The Bible says, you know, that they went out, they preached the word everywhere, and the Lord confirmed the words. Right? So they preached the word. And God confirmed it. So the preaching of the word is so important. Because when we hear the word, we can connect to that word in faith and receive healing. But the most important thing is this. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. The writer of Hebrews says this. He says, for the gospel was preached to us just like it was preached to them. But the word preached to them did not profit them. Why? What does it say? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. See, think about this. The word of God is so powerful. It has all the power to heal, to deliver. But the word preached didn't benefit the people because they didn't mix faith with it. But it tells us something, that we need to mix faith with the word, with the promise of God. So that's why we encourage people, take the healing scriptures, you meditate in it, you read it, you meditate in it, let faith arise in your heart, and then you mix faith with that. Because when faith is mixed with the word, his healing power is released for us. Right? So take the word, mix faith with it, and you can draw the healing, the deliverance that you need from the word of God. Are you with me so far? Because there is healing power in the words. There's healing power in that. How do we release our faith in the word? There are several ways you can do it. One, you can do it by prayer. So you go before God. You say, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, for your word. Through your prayer. Right? You say, Father, I thank you, your word. You said you heal all my sicknesses. You forgive all my sins. You heal all my diseases. Lord, I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus I've been healed. Father, I thank you. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord, my physician. So through your prayer. You're exercising faith. Another way that you and I can exercise faith is through our praise. So you begin to praise God. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I worship you. You're my healer. And, and, and in spite of all our, what we feel in our body, we still praise him. Lord, I praise you. You're my healer. So through your praise, you exercise faith. And another way that you and I can exercise faith is through the words of our mouths, through the declaration of faith. I just want to emphasize this a little bit. 
Romans chapter 10, verses 6 through 10. The Apostle Paul, he writes this in Romans 10, verse 6. He says, but the righteousness of faith speaks like this. So faith speaks like this. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up. In other words, don't talk like this. Faith does not talk like this. God is in heaven. How is he going to come down and help me in my situation? Oh God, if you only come down, something will happen. Oh, you're there. Or maybe Jesus is down there and that, you know, he didn't rise up. Who will go and bring him up? Faith does not talk like this. Faith does not talk hopelessness and despair. Are you listening? But what does it say? So, he, you know, Paul is quoting from the Old Testament. He says, but what does the scripture say? Meaning, what is the scripture's old point of the Old Testament? What does the scripture say? What does it say? The word is near you. So everybody say, the word is near me. Now let's say it like we mean it. Let's say it like we have some life. The word is near me. Let's say it one more time. The word is near me. You see, when you want God to come close to you, when you want God to step into your situation, when you want God to step into your circumstance, God is saying, my word is already there. The word is near you. If you've got the word, then you've got God on the situation. Are you listening? The word is near you. Now where is it? It's in your heart and in your mouth. It's already there. You've already got God on your situation. The word is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. What must you do with your heart? Believe it. What must you do with your mouth? Say it. So Paul goes and continues. He says the word is near you. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. For if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He's stressing the importance of the word being close to us. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. When you believe that word in your heart, it puts you in right standing before God. God says, that's the place I want you to be. I want you to be up in a place where you believe my word in your heart. You know, there are all kinds of doubts and questions going on in our minds. There can be. But in your heart, you say, God, I believe your word. You said you're my healer. You said by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. You said you heal me of all my sicknesses and my diseases. I believe it. And God says, that's the place I want you to be. With a heart, man believes unto righteousness. It puts you in a right place before God. And then confession is made unto Salvation. Salvation is the work of God. It's the saving, healing, delivering work of God. So when you believe it in your heart, you confess it with your mouth. You declare Jesus Christ is my healer. By his stripes I have been healed. The Lord heals me of all my diseases. Confession is made. It leads you into that place of experiencing salvation. The saving, healing, delivering work of God. Amen. So that's how you exercise faith. This is how God wants us to exercise faith. He says, my word is near you. So the first way that we receive healing is by the power of his word and us having faith in that word. And you can do this anytime. You can do this by yourself. You don't need somebody to come to you and pray for you. You do this by yourself. You say, how long should I do it? Do it until it happens. Do it until you experience the salvation. Because God said, with the heart you believe unto righteousness. If you're believing, you're in the right place. What do you do? Just keep making your confession unto salvation. Until you see the saving, healing, delivering work of God. Just keep doing it. Amen? So here's one way. That you and I can receive healing. By believing God and having personal faith. Number two, second way. We receive healing. Through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. As a believer, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you. Let's say this together. The Holy Spirit 
dwells in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's say it again. Sometimes we need to say it a few times to believe it. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body, your body, this one, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is in you. He's not sitting there dormant, gone off to sleep. <laughs> no, the Holy Spirit is doing something inside you. And so the Apostle Paul writes this, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, 2, and 11. He says, I'll, I'll, we'll look at verse 11 first. He says, but if the Spirit of Him who raised Christ up from the dead dwell in you, he who raised Christ up will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit who dwells in you. So what's he saying? He's saying, look, if the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead, if he's living in you, what's he doing? He is giving life to your body. Yes, your body is mortal. Yes, it's going to die. But until it dies, the Holy Spirit in you is doing something. He is quickening. Quickening is the old English word to say give life. He is giving life to your mortal body. So say this with me. The Holy Spirit in me is giving life to every cell in my body. Let's say it one more time. Makes you feel good. The Holy Spirit in me is giving life to every cell in my body. See, that's what the Bible says. Now, if you go back to Romans 8 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. In other words, the indwelling, life-giving Holy Spirit he sets you free from the control, the law, the dominion of sin and death. Now, sickness is death at work in our bodies. Because, if you, do, you know, sickness can eventually lead to death. But what is the life-giving spirit doing in you? He sets you free from the control, the dominion of death over your body. So you say the Holy Spirit in me is giving life to every cell in my body. Are you listening? So that's a second way that you and I can receive divine healing by the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. It's a Holy Spirit, I thank you that you give life to every cell in my body. You re rejuvenate every cell. You heal every cell. You make every cell in my body whole and well. He's He's dwelling in you. Amen. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul is once again emphasizing that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, in that chapter, he's emphasizing one thought. He's emphasizing that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, so don't sin with your body. That's the emphasis. I understand it. All right? But I want to extend that idea. Right? So in maths, we call it extrapolation. So you've got certain lines, certain points in a line. You draw the straight line. You can extrapolate that line. It's because you've got basis to do that. All right? So I want to extend this idea. What's his reasoning in 1 Corinthians 6? He says, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So don't give your body to sin. Because your body belongs to God and God is for your body. 1 Corinthians 6.13. Are you all with me? Right? 1 Corinthians 6.13. He says, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for your body. I know I'm going out of context. I'm just extending the idea now. If my body is not for sin, because the Lord is for my body, the Lord is the ho a holy God, I can also extend the idea to this, that my body is not for sickness, but my body is for the Lord, because the Lord is Jehovah Rapha. 
I'm just extending the idea. I know I'm going out of context, but I'm extending the idea. If my body is not for sin, then my body is not for sickness. My body is not for sin because the Lord is Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord my sanctifier, the one who makes me holy. But the Lord is also Jehovah Rapha. He's the one who heals me, so my body is not for sickness. So look at that verse again, 1 Corinthians 6.13. He said, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord is for the body. So let's say this together. My body is not for sickness, but it's for the Lord. And the Lord, who is Jehovah Rapha, is for my body. Jehovah Rapha is for your body. So let's say it again. My body is not for sickness. It's for the Lord. And the Lord is for my body. Who is the Lord? He's Jehovah Rapha. He's for your body. As long as you live on this earth, he's for your body. Right? And the next verse he says, verse 14, that the Lord who raised, God who raised up, raised up the Lord, he will also raise us up by his power. He's talking about our physical resurrection. The Lord will raise us up by his power. If the Lord can raise my body by his power, he can also heal my body by his power. Simple logic. Amen? You're looking at me like, hmm. <laughs> Simple. But understand this. The Holy Spirit in you is giving life to your body. Your body is his temple. He's for you. He's for your body. That's why you can say the Holy Spirit in me is giving life to every cell in my body. Last point, number three. How do we receive divine healing? By his life in us. If you're a believer, you have Zoe life. You have eternal life in you. The Bible says, he who has the son has life. So let's say this together. I have Jesus. I have life. Right? That's scripture. He who has the son has life. But what is the life of God doing in you? John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. That life is your light. His life is your light. Verse 5. And the light shines in darkness. And the darkness does not overpower it. Comprehend, does not overpower it. So his life in you, the Zoe life of God, his eternal life in you, what's it doing? It's filling you with light. And darkness cannot overpower this light. That means this light dispels darkness. And every work of darkness out of your life. Are you listening? So let's say this to, together. His life is in me. His life in me fills me with the light. And it drives darkness. And every work of darkness out of my being. See, his Zoe life in you is not just sitting there like a ticket to go to heaven. No, his life in you is doing something. It's your light. It fills you with light. And anything out of darkness is dispelled out of your life because his life is in you. Sickness is a work of darkness. It's not the work of God. You don't find it in heaven. You won't have it in eternity. And his life in you dispels darkness out of you. This is so powerful. So you can speak to your mind. His life in me fills my mind with light. It illuminates my mind. You've heard, you know, sometimes you say, he's such a bright person. Yeah, you're a bright person. His life in you fills you with light. It dispels darkness from you. Now, I want you to look at this verse, last verse. Worship team, please come. The Apostle Paul knew something about what the life of God in him does to his body. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, the Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, always caring about 
in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Look at verse 11. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Now he's saying the same thing in both these verses. Verse 10 and verse 11. And you read the context earlier to this. Basically what he's talking about is, is all the persecution they suffered. We are persecuted on every side. So you can imagine as Paul and his team members, they went from city to city. You don't know, sometimes they were beaten, they were stoned, and they were bruised. And, you know, and those days, they didn't have all the conveniences we have. We travel by car, we go by flight, and you say, I'm, doing on, I'm going on missions. Those days, you went on missions, you had to walk or you had to go on some animal carriage. There were no tarred roads, all cobblestones. It was tough. So that's what Paul's talking about. He's saying, our bodies are taking a beating. We're beaten on every side. We are almost at the point of death wherever we go. But while this is happening physically, there's something else that, that Paul points to. He says in both these verses, the life of Jesus is made manifest in our bodies. Now think about it. The life, look at the Greek, it's zoe, the eternal life. The zoe life of Jesus. That is touching my mortal body. So what's he saying? He's saying, look, on one side I'm taking a beating. I can show you the marks I have. I have all these pain things, that, all these things causing hardship to my body. But I also want you to know the life of Jesus. It's touching my body. It's energizing my body. It's empowering my physical body so that I am able to keep pressing on. That means the eternal life of God in me, it's not sitting dormant there. It's touching my body. That's the point I want us to emphasize, understand. The Zoe life of God in you affects your physical body. You believe it? Paul said it. So that's the third reason why, a reason how you and I can expect receive healing. So the life of God, the life of Jesus touches my body. The eternal life, the Zoe life of God that's in me is touching my physical body. Yes, it's, it, you know, I'm in this environment where my body is going to die. The outward man is perishing. But there is the life of God that energizes me, that rejuvenates me, that strengthens my body, helps me to keep going on. And his life in me drives darkness out of me. Amen? Three reasons. We'll do the remaining and coming Sundays next month. But three reasons. Number one. How do we receive healing from God? Through His Word and faith in that Word. Number two, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you. He gives life to every cell in your body. So if a doctor comes and tells you, and I thank God for doctors, the doctors have to do their work, they do all the tests and they say, you know, all these cells in your body are affected. Holy Spirit, give life to these cells. Give life to these cells. Do you think the Holy Spirit, by His power, can heal those cells in your body? Whether it's your blood or some other organ or some other place in your body, in your bone or your bone marrow or wherever. These doctors will tell you this is what's happening. Okay, good. They're doing their work. But you say, Lord, Holy Spirit, quicken those cells. Give life to those cells. Make them come alive. Make them function the way they're supposed to function. Heal those cells, Lord. Amen. Thirdly. His Zoe life in you is manifested in your body. Lord, let your life be manifest in my body. Touch every cell in my body. Let's rise to our feet. This morning, we're going to pray. We are come with expectation. God's word is truth. God is watching over his word to perform it. God is a good God. And He's here to heal us. He's here to deliver us. 
If you came in this morning with some problem in your body, in your mind, your emotions, believe God, believe His words, and just say, Lord, as I stand here in your presence, I want you to heal, make me whole. Heal my body, heal my mind, my emotions, whatever part of us that needs healing, He's able to, He's able to heal. Share this truth with somebody else. Maybe they need healing in their bodies or minds or emotions. Share this with somebody else. Let them be encouraged to receive healing. The worship team is going to lead us. Take this time to just connect with God through your prayer, through your praise, through your declaration, through action. Take this time to connect with God right after that. Come back and lead us in a time of prayer. Let's expect the Lord to do things for us.
Thank you, Lord. Gonna lead us in a time that we're going to declare the word. The word is near you. It's in your heart and in your mouth. The word is near you. It's in your heart for you to believe it. It's in your mouth to declare it. With a heart man believes unto righteousness, with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. As we just get into this time, a few minutes of just making, believing in our hearts and declaring with our mouths, I want you to expect God to touch you, God to heal you, God to make you whole. Expect a miracle to take place in your body, in your mind. Expect a healing to take place. And if there's something that happens right here, right now, like we always say, just come forward, come up here. We want to hear your testimony. We want to give you an opportunity to, to share. So if something happens to you right here, right now, this morning, as we make our declaration, as we pray, and you experience the touch of God, don't just go back quietly. I want you to come forward. Just come up here and testify. Share what God's done. Let's take those testimonies. Let's celebrate together. Okay? So expect something to happen. Expect healing in your body or your mind, your emotions. And check. As we do this, check your body. If something happens, make sure you come forward. We'll take your testimony very quickly. Now, we know that some conditions need to be verified by the doctors, and we encourage you to do that. Go back to the doctor, let them check you, do whatever tests need to be done, and let the doctor verify that you've been healed. And that's, that's important. We encourage you to do that. But if you can test, you can verify right here that something has happened to you as we pray, then please come and testify to what the Lord has. And also, as right after the declaration when I pray I will take a few moments to rebuke demons to rebuke evil spirits so just for those of you who don't understand that God has given us authority the devils are afraid of us and as we speak with that command with that authority and, and rebuke evil spirits sometimes some sicknesses some dis disturbances or torments, emotional, mental, physical, are caused by these evil spirits. And so we need to get them out. And we speak sternly. We command them to leave. So that's what we are doing. In case you're not familiar with it, just explain. And so when that happens, you will experience release. Demons will leave. Tormenting spirits will leave. Sometimes when they leave, they cause a little commotion. They might make a little noise. So if you see somebody, huh, you know, falling down or causing some problems, don't, don't, don't get disturbed. They're just being set free. Leave them alone. Things are happening. God is setting them free. So don't worry about that, okay? Sometimes things happen very quietly. Demons just pack and leave. Sometimes there could be a little bit of disturbance. Just leave them alone. Don't worry about it. God is setting them free. So that's what we're going to do. Let's pray. Let's pray. Say this out loud with me. Jehovah Rapha is my healer. The Lord is my physician. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my diseases. God has blessed my bread and my water. And He has taken all sickness away from my midst. The Lord Jesus took upon himself all my sicknesses, all my diseases, all my pains, 
and by his wounds I have been healed from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet by his stripes I have been healed the Holy Spirit in me gives life to every cell in my body his life in me fills me with light and drives darkness out of me his life in me is manifested in my physical body my body is healed is made whole by the life of God in me my body is healed my mind is sound I am whole in Jesus name amen father I thank you for your words that your word is truth and your word will not return to you void. father thank you that you are our healer God you are Jehovah Rapha the Lord our healer that you heal us of all our diseases you heal us of all our infirmities and our pains so even now let the healing virtue of God touch people kidneys that kidneys be healed they're not functioning properly let them be healed in the name of Jesus receive your healing I speak to organs and I command them to receive healing be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I command every chronic illnesses things that have been there for many years perhaps even across generations in the name of Jesus I take authority over every spirit of infirmity and I command it out I command it to come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Satan you have no authority in this place you have no authority over this people in the name of Jesus I speak to every foul spirit of infirmity I speak to every demon troubling people harassing people in their minds every tormenting oppressing spirit I come against you every spirit oppressing people in their minds I command you in the name of Jesus to leave every spirit of infirmity I command you come out in Jesus name I command every spirit of infirmity to leave in the name of Jesus chronic pains caused by those spirits I command your spirits out and pains to disappear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ spirits that have attached themselves to organs that are malfunctioning I command you out and I command wholeness to return to these organs in the body let them function well right now in Jesus name and Lord I thank you that you heal blood conditions make them whole in the name of Jesus make them whole in the name of Jesus spirits of infirmity affecting blood the blood I command you out in Jesus name let the blood be made whole in the name of Jesus father we give you thanks and God we thank you that you are the healer even of terminal conditions terminal conditions be reversed in the name of Jesus what doctors have said is impossible be healed in the name of Jesus be made whole receive life in the name of Jesus God we thank you God we bless you we honor you just want you to lift your hands up and praise God thank him right now thank him Lord we give you thanks we give you praise I want you to check your body if you experience the power of God right now, you experience a healing, you experience a miracle, the pain is gone, the discomfort is gone, just step out of your seats and come right up here. Let's testify to the glory of God. If you've experienced the healing right now, this moment, get out of your seats, just come right up here and give God the glory, give a testimony to the, Lord, to the glory of God. If you've experienced a touch, just do that. Just feel free to come on forward and testify. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise, Father.
for the healing of our bodies, for the healing of our minds, that you make us whole. And we give you thanks. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We're just going to sing for one more song. I believe you're my healer. As let's make that your declaration. Lord, I believe you're my healer. You hold my every moment. Can we sing that, please? You are the God that he let me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my And if you experience God's touch this morning, something has happened to you, I just want to give one last time an invitation for you to just come forward while we sing that. If there's anyone here, you've experienced God's touch. Just take, just step out of your seats, come right up here. Let's make that declaration again. You are the Lord. You are the God that He led me. sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the God, my healer. You sent your Before we close this morning, I just want to give an invitation to anyone here you've never received Jesus Christ into your life. I want to give you an invitation to receive Jesus into your life. The Bible says that as many as who received Him, who received Jesus, to them He gives the power to become the children of God. And you and I receive Jesus into our lives he makes us children of God sons and daughters of God and so if you've never received Jesus into your life you've never said Jesus come into my life forgive me my sins be the Lord and Savior of my life if you've never prayed that prayer I want to give you an opportunity to do that this morning I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer and if you feel prompted in your heart to do that pray this prayer with me to say this with me, if you've never done this before, 
Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried and you rose up again. And you're alive today. Help me to follow you and you alone the rest of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Is there anyone here who prayed this prayer with me for the very first time? We want to see your hands. I want to celebrate with you. Anyone, anyone, anyone here, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Let me see your hand. I see one hand up there. God bless. Anybody else? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless. God bless. All right, we just wave your hand. We want to make sure that you receive this packet. It's called a New Believer's Bag. There's a card there that decision card where you can write your name and number please make sure you do that hand this card back to them so that we can be in touch with you and tell you how to use the resources in the back we're going to pray and close our pastors will be here i call our pastors over here to please come make yourself available to pray for the people to pray and minister to people one-on-one -on -one. so if you need personal prayer you can come and meet with us we'll be here uh, to pray with you let's close please the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.